Hi and uh, welcome here from Cornwall. Uh, this is the third time I've embarked on uh, this attempt to record here and hopefully have some success. I um, hope you're enjoying the, the wallpaper behind me. Uh, we've certainly started enjoying the event here. The weather's good. I've got some bad news though. Since I recorded the first version, uh, my son has got some spots. I'm afraid he's uh, confined to his room. He's got chicken pox, believe it or not. So that's excitement of the wrong type, I think you'll agree. But anyway, there you go. Uh, I'll report more of that when I get back. So what have we got? Uh, what have we got ahead of us? Well, we'll have the usual hand evaluation or blind auction. We'll also have, um, we'll be talking about declare play, the topic of the month. And uh, we'll have a bidding quiz to finish. And of course, then I'll move on to the beginners stuff. So the usual thing. It's nice to be live. We're doing uh, our Cornwall event, which is the second one we're doing. Uh, it's been fun. Uh, and in the background here, I've got Zoe, who's trying not to um, laugh or anything like because obviously I've got to concentrate here. Um, but uh, we've been well looked after, I have to say. And uh, and all the clients at the moment are on a nice tour. Um, uh, enjoying Cornwall. I think they're in a tin mine at the moment. I think they're in a tin mine. Okay, so let's get going. Um, I will go to the usual blind auction. So let's go to that. Um, just need to go invisible for this. You can't see the hands because I want them. So let's go to that. Two parts. If you remember, what happens is you see an invisible auction. What you do? You see the auction, but you don't see the hands. So it goes one trump from the rest, pass, two hearts, transfer, two spades completing the transfer, two no trumps. Then it goes a little straight because three hearts from west and four hearts from now, it's your job to try and picture the hands of your opponent. So, of course, usually if you're on open lead, you can see your own hand. But what I'm trying to do is focus your attention just simply on the auction so that you're not, shall we say, distracted by your own hand. Okay, so we'll come back to that later. Okay, uh, for the moment, uh, let's uh, think about the... Um, Excuse me, the uh, topic that we're going to be dealing with, which of course is declare a place. I'll pop it up to there. There we go. So, what have we got to talk about? Well, the same as I have done throughout this month is planning your play with attitude with a double U. And we're going to be focusing on the W, actually, the worrying about defense. So, let's just make sure we remember what those letters stand for aim, A for aim. As we often say, not so easy playing Paris Bridge because you're not quite sure how many tricks you want. TT for top tricks. Those are tricks you make without doing anything. Tricks that you will always make. Um, so believe you may be at less than that, you're not doing them. And then of course you've got to increase your tricks. You have to add tricks to your top tricks. Okay. Uh, working out ways to establish tricks, either by knocking out high cards, taking finesses, using your extra limb. The worry about the defence is when you have too few stoppers, you're going to need to do something different. And of course, we've talked about holding it last week, and we're going to carry on with that um, discussion today. The execution or entries phase, the E, is about how you get from hand to hand and whether you can actually make the tricks that you are counting. So planning your play through. So let's worry about the defense. Essentially, if you haven't got enough stoppers, what you're trying to do is you're considering holding up. We saw that last week. We saw the idea of the rule of seven, taking away the number of cards you could from seven, but we found that it wasn't perfect. It only works really in specific times and you'd be better off in a sense treating each example as an individual example. And we're going to see more of that today. And that's particularly true of pairs. 
because although you might secure a contract by ducking, it might be the case that you might have made more tricks if you didn't duck. You might gamble, the gamble might pay off if that makes sense. And what we're going to look at is two examples today, one sent in and one created, and see whether we can decide whether ducking is right or not. <clears throat> okay, so you're looking for a balance between safety and greed, because you know how good greed can be. So let's start with this first one. This, um, you win three no trumps, you get the 10 of spades lead, and I need you to make your plan. So, you count your top tricks, you get seven. Ace of spades, ace, king, queen of diamonds, and ace, king, queen of clubs. Extra tricks, well, they're going to come from the minors. You, diamonds and clubs. And then, of course, we're worrying about defense, and that's when we decide whether we should duck. So let's look at it. In theory, if you were using the rule of seven and you're worried about five card spades, you might duck twice. And it is maybe the safest thing to do, and it could help you to make the contract secure. The problem I've got is that most of the time, if you look at diamonds, you're hoping for a three-two break in diamonds, or even um, a four-one break. As long as South has the singleton jack or ten, you would still make five diamond tricks. Which means that most of the time, you are going to make nine tricks. So therefore, I'm not sure you need to be ducking in the spades. Okay, and what would what, what, the point? The point being that if those diamonds do come in, then so might the clubs. Now the clubs are less likely to come in. They would need to break 3-3, three, three. that's unlikely, but there's two things that might happen. Let's say the diamonds do win. North perhaps has four clubs to the nine. Now, maybe he shouldn't discard from four clubs to the nine in the nine, eight, seven, six. But if he does, all your clubs come in. But also, of course, the clubs might break 3-3. Three, three. So if diamonds are breaking normally, which is most of the time you've got your nine tricks, and then if the clubs break normally, as, uh, sorry, the clubs break favorably as well, you're talking 12 tricks. Can you see that? And so suddenly, if you duck the first trick, bear in mind the tennis space is that, and it's won by South, who's probably going to overtake. If South switches to hearts, they might take two hard tricks, and suddenly the maximum of tricks you can make is 10. But now that might score well, but if those clubs break or someone discards the clubs on the diamonds, you're ending up with a poor score because other people have made 12 tricks. So for me, I'm not going to duck on this occasion. Okay, I would feel that most of the time I'm going to make five diamonds. And so therefore, I'll pursue as many tricks as I can by playing off as many winners as I can. Hopefully five diamonds and then, as I say, on a good day, who knows, six more clubs. Okay, so that was the first hand. Let's have a look at the second hand and see what we think of this one. So again, simple auction here, one no trump, three no trumps, didn't show that on the other one. This one was sent in by um, Angela Gilbert. So um, we'll have a look at this one. I will show you it on QPlus because it's slightly easier to see something. Let's analyze it first on uh, the PowerPoint. So you get the lead of the 10 of spades. Now, of course, it's possible that North has the ace of spades, but I'm going to tell you that North doesn't. Turn up with it. So it turns out that no surprise you weren't going to have one stop in spades. Seven top tricks, same as last time. Ace, king, queen, jack of clubs, those are all winners definitely. The ace of diamonds and the ace, king of hearts. Okay, so that's seven top tricks. Are you going to make more? Well, yes, of course, from diamonds. Okay, can't make any more from clubs, you've already counted for. But here you're going to make more from diamonds, hopefully. Okay, so let's discuss. Are we going to die? So let's say it goes 10, king, ace. Another spade is left, is led back, and they have established their spade to do. Do you duck or do you not? Now, on the previous hand, a 3 2 break was odds favour as well as a 4 1 break. So I think you were going to make five diamonds a lot of time. Here, what are the chances of you making five diamonds here? 
Well, clearly, if the king of diamonds is with south, you're likely to lose. Okay, as you can guess, it's a single thing. But not only that, if north has king 10 to 3, you're still going to lose a diamond. So I think it's going to be quite important here to duck because I'm expecting a lot of the time to lose a diamond trade. Can you see that? And not only that, assuming that North has a long spade, he doesn't have to, but he often will because he's lent them. Well then, because the diamond trick is likely to be lost to South, you take the Queen of Diamonds finesse and it loses perhaps to the King, then of course, hopefully more, a South will have no spades left if we duck to the third round. So although if everything is perfect, no doubt about it, if I make five diamonds, four clubs, two hearts and a spade, I'll make 12 tricks. I think the odds are very against that. And so therefore, I'm going to plan to play safe and duck a spade. Okay, so there'll be the odd player who chooses not to do that and comes in with 12 tricks. But for me, the correct play here, getting the balance right between greed and safety, is to duck. Okay. So to duck or not to duck. So I'll take you to the Q plus table so I can show you. So again, you may need to adjust your screen to get, um, to get that right. And so let's just see, I'll um, quickly go through the bidding because it's a good auction, of course, of no trouble and free no trouble. So they don't see anything about it now, just see this. And then let's see um, how we play. So the ten of spades is head, as I say. And we put the king. No surprise that it loses. And they lead a spade back. And the key here is yes, I could win this and go for broke. But I think that's against them. So I'm going to duck. Okay. So I'm giving up on the chance of making um, 12 tricks. So I've been the queen, but I feel as if if the spades are 5 3, I've cut the two players towards it. So now, what we do now is play the best play in these diamonds. And I think the key thing here is I'm going to play four rounds of clubs on. Because I'm hoping to give them the chance to discard a diamond. So I'll show you the four. Now you might think, oh, I can take a diamond finesse now. Okay. And you could, you could absolutely. But by playing the fourth round of clubs and throwing a diamond, let me just do that. So when I play this one, I'm going to throw a diamond. Now, bear in mind, they can see five diamonds in the dark. But I've discarded one as West. They can't see West's hand. So what do you think West is favoured to have? Given that I haven't played on diamonds yet, surely the favourite hand I would put West in with is four hearts to the ace jack. So from South's point of view, he might hope his partner's got king jack, king queen diamonds, and was going to keep his four hearts. So by playing the fourth round of clubs, you might get a bonus diamond disc. And of course, and I think that's reasonable. I think it's perfectly reasonable. So that when I play the Queen of Diamonds, I, I do end up making those diamonds. Okay, and make the rest of the tricks. I mean, you can see Jack of Diamonds and obviously the rest of the tricks. Notice that if I don't play the last club, well then of course, when I need the Queen of Diamonds, I haven't forced South to discard. So I win the Ace. But unless I can see through the cards, I'm probably going to play the Jack of Diamonds next and lose to the 10. And so I'm only really making 10 tricks. I think 11 tricks will score well here. And that's what Angela said. In fact, she said that nobody had made 12. Um, a few had made 11 and quite a few were making 10. Um, and what I was sort of just clarifying was that by playing the last round of clubs, it gives you an extra chance. I do not think it is easy for South to get that. When you play the ace of clubs, I think a huge number of people are, are going to discard. Remember, they've thrown diamonds from both hands after all. Why should they think that, that was the important suit? And so I think a lot of people will throw a diamond and that makes sure that you make your little tricks. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed.
enjoy that. Let's quickly nip back to PowerPoint just to show you that. Um, there's the full hand on the PowerPoint. Again, I think 11 chips is, is a good one. I think ducking is important. It's the right thing to do most of the time. So we'll come back to that in a moment when we talk about supporting open. Um, we are looking uh, towards cruising a lot more now and uh, and bridge weekends in, in England and around Britain and hopefully holidays abroad. So do look out for those, Mallorca and um, where else do we go? Croatia. Um, I'm going to Mallorca next month, actually. Looking forward to it. First time, hopefully, to get some slightly warmer weather. We will see. So where do we go next? I usually take you to the, um, the blind hand. So let's go to that. If we can run on that, so I will just make everything invisible to start with. <laughs> okay, so let's go from that auction again. We said the auction was one no chunk, a transfer to spades, two no trumps, and then three halves. Four. Okay. So I think the start of the auction, I hope, is fine. West has shown 12 to 14 points. East has shown five spades by making this transfer. He then invites game with two no trumps. Now, usually at this point, you're expecting West to bid one of four things pass, three spades, three no trumps, or four spades. He either accepts the invitation to game or not, and he decides whether he plays in spades or not. However, West has chosen to bid three hearts, which seems a bit odd. Why is he doing it? Well, he shouldn't just have four hearts, because if East had five and four, he should show them. He should be able to show them, either by bidding stain um, or, by, or by any another means, depending on how the partnership plays it. So three hearts for me would have to show five. Now, I don't like opening one no trump, particularly with five hearts, but with five poor hearts, I would. So, what East what West is saying is, look, partner, I want to play in the game, but by the way, I've got five hearts. I haven't got three spades because I'd support your spades if I had those, if I had distribution of hand and three spades. So, I'm asking my partner to choose between four hearts and three no trumps. It's a tough bid. Let me open up the hands. It's a tough bid, and I have to say, it's one of the reasons I, I don't advocate opening one no trouble with five card majors is because most people don't know how to play afterwards. I would expect most players to miss four hearts. They would go one no trump, transfer to spades, two spades, two no trumps, and then it will probably go three no trumps or even pass from the West hand. Why am I bidding game? I've got 13 points, I've got a five card suit, and I've got two tens. That is comfortably enough to go for game. Okay, so I don't mind you bidding three no trumps with it. Okay, you're certainly not bidding four, uh, four spades because you don't have a spade fit. But the idea of bidding three hearts is just bidding it on the way. The same auction can happen like this one no trump, two no trumps. If partner bids one no trump, two no trumps, on the way to three no trumps, you can show a five card major. For me, it would be a weak five card major. Some of you open one at Trump whenever you have one. And if you're not used to bidding your five card majors in these kind of auctions, you really should not be doing it because you'll miss too many good contracts. If I'm honest, if you if you open regular five card majors, you should probably be playing five card stain. But that is complicated, and I do not recommend it. Um, you know, because the, the fewer compl complications in a sense, the better. But as you can see, four hearts is a great contract. Whereas um, three no trumps would struggle. Uh, North would lead the jack of clubs there from ace jack 10. And then when west uh, when south gets it, they can lead another club. And the defense are going to make at least the ace king parts and three club tricks. In fact, they may end up making a fourth spade as well. So you might get two down. In hearts, I think all you're going to lose probably is the ace of king parts and the ace of clubs. Okay. You might have to work a little bit harder than that. Um, on a diamond lead, you're going to have to try to work out what the best play is. So it's not always going to make it. You've definitely got chances, reasonable chances, in, uh, in four hearts. So I hope you enjoyed that one. Quite tricky, I will admit. Um, 
But, um, but it's important to see that, this idea of finding your fits in majors. Here it was a 5-3 fit. Um, and obviously if we choose to open the heart, that's a different matter. But we're only 5 to the jack, 10, I've got sympathy with Pablo Chong. I don't really like the idea of opening one heart and rebuilding two hearts on a hand that has most of its points in the other three suits. So bear in mind it had 12 points in spades, diamonds and clubs and just the one point in hearts. So I, I'm, I've got sympathy with opening one of trouble, but I want you to try and make it. Okay, um, what have we got left? Well, our prize winner uh, this week was Jeffrey Smithson. Jeffrey Smithson, so well done to Jeffrey. I'll be in contact soon and uh, give you the opportunity to pay him now. Prize teams, hopefully. Might well be next month after this week. I might be for that. For so, hope you enjoyed that. Now, I am really sorry it's taken a whole week to get it recorded and uploaded. We haven't quite got that speed of internet that we require here. I can get the odd football score, uh, etc., but I'm afraid we can't do the upload and download speed. I know Helen's been trying to upload and download a variety of things. And I have to say, I'd like to say thank you to her because she's put so much effort in trying to get this working that, um, um, you know, uh, I... She could, have, she could have had a lot more rest for a few days than, than she's had. Okay, well, now of course she's going to be having her dinners in the bedroom because Alfie's, Alfie's confined up now, although we probably managed to get to the beach on the other occasion. We will see. But he's being a very good boy, not, uh, not scratchy, unlike his father, who's still got a few scars on his forehead from his, from his chicken pox when he was young. However, I have lots of brothers and sisters. We had chicken pox parties in those days. Poor old Alfie's doesn't really get a chicken pox party, so we'll see. So at the bidding quiz, let me give you that bidding quiz. Um, there you go. Um, similar to last week, two spades, two no trump overcall pass, and it's your bid. Two spades, two no trumps, pass, and it's your bid. Um, what do you think with that hat? Uh, have a little think. Okay. And uh, I'll leave you with that. Don't forget, you can get the answer on the website. Um, you can see the question as well on the website. If you remember or not, you can see it there. And do join in with us. Don't forget, we're here for you to enjoy. We're here. We're going to carry on going. I enjoy doing it. I know a lot of you enjoy it. You don't have to do everything, don't forget. I know you've got less time now. But I'm hoping that even if you do, I don't know, one quarter of what we give to you, you're getting good value for money. And that's what I want you to work out. And that's what we want to do. Hoping to work hand in hand as you go back into the world of bridge, because we should hopefully be getting there. You know, enjoying bridge live, because I love it. And I love doing these live events so that you can interact with people and enjoy it so much more. So what I'm going to do is say uh, goodbye to you and hopefully see you later in the week. Don't forget, on Wednesday, um, I'm thinking that's tomorrow, but it might be even the same day by the time you actually get to see this. I have done recorded teams of me playing against the computer. Um, so you can watch that live, but you'll also have the opportunity to play the hands, either before or after one another. I will give you the list, as it were, the number of the hands. You can have the hand numbers and play it on Q, plus, or a PBN file or a LIN file. And you can play it in any which way you want. You don't have to play them, of course. You can just watch me playing against the computer or uh, play yourself and see how you get on and compare. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed that. See you again soon. I'm going to head off to my beginner's little section. And so here we go. Go over to the PowerPoint and see you soon. So here we are. Um, today it's supporting as opener. Supporting as openers. So the last couple of days we've been talking about supporting as a responder. And with a responder, we said you needed six points to respond. Hence, your little table of supporting started at six. If you're the opening bidder, you've already said you've got 12 points. So clearly things are going to change. So what do I mean by supporting as opening? Well, if you open the bidding and your partner responds, what happens if you like this suit? So let's look at these two hands. As you can see, if you look at the West hand, assuming West is the first one to bid, he has longer clubs, so he would start by bidding club. Can you see that? So then the responder would bid half. 
and we'll see this in a moment. But let's think about it in terms of mini bridge. All you do is add up your points, so 16 points and 10 points. Because our side have the most, West would end up being declarer. West would see both hands on the table. And seeing both hands, West would think, oh, hearts are going to be great as trumps. So he would select hearts as trumps. And with 26 points and plenty of hard cards, he would surely choose a game contract. And remember, that is our job in the video. Our job is to decide what the denomination is. Here it's going to be hearts. And secondly, to decide what level we're going to play at. So playing mini bridge, because you can see the two hands, it's easy. What I need to do now is we've got to decide how we're going to bid these hands. So when you like partner suit, as we said last week, once you've decided you like partner suit, particularly if it is a major suit, we are going to agree. So we're going to bid the same suit. And we to how high are we going to bid them? We can bid two hearts, three hearts, or four hearts. Well, like right last week, we've got to have a table of bids. I know it's hard work, I apologize for this, but part of learning a language which basically uh, bridges, uh, and certainly the bidding in bridges, part of it is, I'm afraid, is hard work. Um, so you've got to do it. So let's put up the table. So it goes one club from you or one heart from your partner. Well, you've opened the bidding, so you must have 12 points. So the minimum hand is about 12 to 14 points. And with that, you would just say, partner, I like your hearts. I've got to bid something because I've promised to bid again. I like your hearts, but I'm not that strong. You decide whether we've got enough for game. So at this point, the respondent has another go and he would decide how high to go. If we're a little bit stronger, 15 to 17 points, then I'm going to jump one level and jump up to three hearts. Partner, I still love your hearts, but I've got a bit of extra strength here. So I don't really need too much more from you to make a game. And last but not least, if you've got 18 or 19 points, or to be honest, now that your partner's shown six or more points and you've got a fit, I think you can manage to go to game. Excuse me for that. So that, I'm afraid, is a table you have to learn. And I often say to beginners, have the table on the table in front of you, as it were, and keep practicing. And after a while, it will become second nature, as it were. The idea is, though, the lower the bid, the fewer points, obviously. And if you know your minimum and your maximum, so remember, with 20 or more points, we generally start at the two level when we open the bidding. And with fewer than 12 points, we don't open. So we're between 12 and 19. And you've got three different bids, the two level, the three level, and the four level. Clearly going upwards with the amount of strength. So let's just look at some examples of that. So here's your hand. With 12 points, you open the bidding one club, your longest suit. If your partner bids one heart, you're excited about hearts. So you bid hearts as well, telling your partner that's the suit that we should have as trumps, but you're just going to bid two hearts. Partner, I've got no extra strength. I've, I've started with, with an opening bid, so you know I've got 12. That's pretty much it. You decide. If you've got lots of points, you can jump to game in hearts. I've thrown an ace in there. I've given you 16 points, and of course it's really just one extra trick, and hence the idea of bidding a bit high. So one club, one heart, this time, I'm jumping to three hearts, okay? And if I just give you another high card, the King of Diamonds as well, now you've got 19 points. Still open one club, one half partner, but even with just six points in your partner's hand, you've got the magic 25, so you can jump to four hearts, saying, partner, even if you've got a minimal hand, I think we can make game. I know we want to play in hearts, but I feel we should be in game. Okay. So don't forget, when you like your partner's suit, you've got four cards in the major. Count your points and follow the rules. You've got to follow the openers table. And I'm afraid to say, I've got to add a little bit. Because with Trump's decided, we like a bit of distribution. And we talked about this last week. So with singletons and foins, you still need to add strength. So I will look at it next week. Again, I have open and responding, but I will give open some distribution. And again, we will see 
that Open will be able to support a bit higher with these voids and pseudos. So it is hard work. Okay, but as time goes by, you'll get used to it, and hopefully you'll understand how, how the language works. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'm sorry it took so long to go. I hope you could see me amongst the background of the lovely birds on the wallpaper here in the welcome reception room at the Falmouth Hotel. Uh, as I say, we are having a lovely time here. Um, Alfie's actually enjoying it as well. He's got the attention of his parents. Uh, Mummy's going to be up with him a lot of the time, obviously. They'll have their food delivered to them. And we will still, I promise you, an ice cream after I've finished this recording. So that is where I'm off to next. Hope you enjoyed it and see you again.